Hi, I'm Andrew Wenzel from Honda Australia, and we're here today to talk about the BF90, which is the best 90 in its class. It's also backed by the Honda Australia five-year warranty. I also have Luke Kirkby-Clark here, who's our technical officer. Luke, explain how the five-year warranty works and what the service intervals are on the BF90. Yeah, Andrew, the good thing uh, with Honda is it's a true five-year warranty that's non-declining. So basically that means that the warranty from the first day to the last day of the warranty period remains the same. Uh, and the warranty itself is actually backed by Honda Japan. With all manufacturers now, warranty also relies on getting your engine serviced. Uh, servicing is basically industry standard across the outboard range. With the Honda, at your 20 hour, you need a 20 hour service, which is a, a minor service that just checks everything over, changes the oils and gets it, makes sure it's running to its optimum so you're ready to go. From there, you have a yearly or 100 hour service which is also classed as a minor service, which is oils, filters, different things like that. Uh, check over, make sure it's performing the way it should be. Then every two years or 200 hours is the major service, which during that you do valve clearances, water pump, and basically goes right through the engine, replace filters, check it over. With, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions with four stroke that the servicing's actually dearer. With four strokes, they uh, the servicing price is sort of offset to the two-stroke oil, so comparatively, the four-strokes are getting cheaper and cheaper to service these days. The 100-hour service for the BF90, what's required in the service? Okay, with the, uh, with the service on the 90, the technician's normally going to start at the power head here. Once he's uh, got the cover off, you know, there's a few things he does need to check. You can check, he'll check all your spark plugs. Now, with four-strokes, a lot of them are running Iridium plugs. There is two options. You can run standard plugs or Iridium. The Iridium plugs now got a service life of 400 hours and the standard ones are down to 100. Uh, so once he's checked the spark plugs, there's also a thermostat here and one inside the block here that he will check as well. Uh, he'll pull those out, clean them, check that they're operating fine. The BF90 has a, a timing chain with a self-adjusting uh, tensioner, which you won't need to check because it does it automatically. Also on board the engine, uh, there's a few few fuel filters, uh, one inside the vapour separator, which is a high pressure fuel filter that's going to restrict any of the finer dirt entering into the engine. Uh, and there's also a smaller onboard fuel filter that's a primary fuel filter that they'll check and replace if necessary. Once he's done the fuel filters and fuel side of things, he's going to come along and he's going to check out the oil filter and the oil. Uh, he'll drain the oil and replace the oil filter. Then that's basically the power head top end done. Uh, once he's gone from there, He'll take the gearbox off, he'll check your water pump impeller, which is vital, it's a rubber component that needs to be checked yearly and replaced when it's perished. Also down in the gearbox there's gear oil as well that needs to be checked yearly and replaced. Uh, another thing is the prop, he'll take your prop off and he'll check behind the prop. Uh, sometimes, you know, when you're out fishing, you get fishing line wrapped around the prop and it can cause damage to the seals as well. Once he's done all that and gets the engine back together, uh, we have a computer system called Dr. H that he can hook into your engine and it's basically going to tell him all the information about your engine. If there's any fault codes, it'll store those and he can check. It will also be able to give you an accurate printout showing the usage of the engine, the RPM and how many hours it's done at each RPM, which is good when you go to resell your engine. Okay, so that's basically covering the 100 hour service. When you go to the 200 hour, uh, or the two yearly, it's a, it's a bigger service. But what we do there, inside all four stroke outboards, they have valves and the valves need to be adjusted regularly to keep the engine running right. If you don't adjust the valves later on down the track, you're going to have a fair bit of problem. Now, with the Honda outboards, uh, we're the only ones that use fully adjustable valves. And with Honda, everything's quite easy to service. So in behind here is the rocker cover or tappet cover, as some people call it, and in behind there is the valves. So at 200 hours, it's a relatively quick job for the mechanic to adjust the valves all up to right to keep your engine in optimum condition. We've actually got these engines that have done well over 15,000 hours and still continue running using the original heads and cylinders. Okay, so one thing, uh, you always hear the, the good old stories about people never changing a water pump impeller for 10 years, but actually it's fairly naive. The water pump, a lot of people don't understand, the water pump impeller is just a rubber component. Here's actually a new water pump impeller, which you can see when they're new, they're quite flexible uh, and they're fairly sturdy. One thing that's going to greatly affect your water pump and damage it very rapidly is lack of water. So you need to make sure when you're flushing the engine, you have a good constant flow of water coming out of the telltale. If the water's not coming out, stop the motor immediately. Uh, this is a type of damage that will happen with lack of water. The water being rubber running in a stainless steel housing here, you can see the rubber and the stainless steel housing is going to generate a lot of heat very quickly and even do major damage within 30 to 40 seconds. 
you can see here the inside of the housing started to melt and from here this is only just going to degenerate very quickly and cause major problems for your engine. Today you see boats with single engines and twin engines on them. What's the main difference and why would you have two against one? With twins they're a lot easier to manoeuvre, especially on catamarans, quite easy to manoeuvre with the twin engines. Uh, when you go into offshore conditions, the twins tend to ride a little bit better. Most, most big mono hulls they fit trim tabs, but with the twin engine installation you can adjust the trim of the engine, each engine differently to get a much better ride. Also in a following sea you might find the boat tends to lean over one side, you can adjust the trim and that'll ride out of it. Uh, with the bigger engines up to 150 and upwards, you can get them in a counter-rotating gearbox, which makes the boat, you'll have one left-hand rotation prop, one right-hand rotation, which will make the boat track very well in the sea. Uh, the other main benefit with the bigger ones is you can actually get a lot of horsepower on the back of boats now. So where boats previously would have been powered by inboards, uh, you can now see that guys are starting to use the 200 and upwards to get up to that 500 horsepower on the back of a big boat, which is also very good. And then once they've got them on the back of the boat, they have the better features of an outboard. They're, they're purpose-built for salt water. Maintenance is a lot easier because they're on the back of the boat. The legs are easy to get out of the water if you're going to moor them. Uh, and just all around generally a better thing. The BF90's got uh, VTEC on the engine. Uh, it was obviously developed by the Honda Formula One team. And this engine also is developed on the Jazz engine. Tell us a bit about those. Yeah, basically the Honda Jazz is the number one selling car worldwide. And the inside the 90, the powerhead, uh, is basically the same configuration as a Honda car based on the Honda Jazz. With the VTEC, Honda was the very first company to introduce variable valve timing. Uh, and from there it's been copied a few times but fairly unsuccessfully. The Honda VTEC has had over 18 million engines produced without one recorded failure.